with that, Daybreak Legends here to offer his perspective on our global theme of ritual. Please welcome the one and only Manchias Airy, everybody. Manchias. Thank you. Hey, good morning. What an introduction. Thank you, Matt. I really, really appreciate that. We, uh, we got to know each other breaking bread at a Thai restaurant in Scandinavia, right? So uh, I am really excited to be with you all today. I, in my job as CEO, I get a chance to talk in spaces like this often. I uh, have an opportunity to share the stories of the thousands of students that we serve really advocating for them and talking about issues around educational equity access and really finding ways to overcome the educational achievement gap. But today is different. I really was excited when Matt and Tim said, hey, would you talk to us about ritual? And so I get a chance to share something else that's really near and dear to my heart have a couple of slides, but I hear they're kind of faded, so I'm just going to let my words paint the picture for you all today. And so when we talk about ritual, you heard that I worked at crisis assistance, you've heard that I've worked for social services, you hear that I work at communities and schools now, but I get a chance to share the underpinnings of my thought processes and how ritual can give us the courage and the chutzpah to really take on things that seem so big and so hard. And so I hope just in the short time that I have with you all today that I can share some of the rituals that I do that allow me to think that I can make a difference in this space in the same way that Tin and Matt have made a difference in Charlotte, let's give it up for the space that they've created here for us, right? So today I get a chance to tell you how I transcended my own fear and how I overcame the deadly grips of imposter syndrome. And those of you who aren't familiar with the term imposter syndrome, it's a real fancy way of saying, how the hell did I get here and what did I sign up for, right? Ritual helps you transcend your own limitations and it helps you begin to look at challenges in life, not as obstacles, but as seeds of growth and opportunities to transcend. And every creator has that point in their life where they get creative block, they get writer's block, they just can't paint, they can't find another song. And ritual is what you must use to transcend those limitations. So I'll start out by asking you, when I say ritual, what comes to mind? You know, if my slides were working here, you would see the image of the Pope first, right? Because, ah, there you go. <laughs> You see the image of the Pope first, and the Pope comes to mind if you were raised in a certain part of town, if you were raised in a certain region of the globe. But other people, when you think of ritual, may see this image, a traditional healer, a shaman. And what ritual is for you or me is different. But at the core of ritual, it's the ability to tap into your inner power so that you can succeed and do things that you didn't think you were able to do. Today, though, we have to figure out how is ritual relevant in the 21st century? I had a meeting yesterday with my team. We were welcoming back the staff, getting ready for a new school year, and we were reflecting on what happened in 2023. And for folks in the IT space, they celebrated 2023 because it was a hallmark in the world of AI. I don't know if you realize this, but last year, ChatGBT was able to pass the bar exam. Did y'all know that? 
So 2023 will go down in history as a time when computers are really getting very close to being smarter than humans. And so we have to ask ourselves, what's the relevance of ritual in modern times, and how can rituals compete with computers that smart? So now, by now you're probably thinking, okay, Tim and Matt, you've got this CEO guy from CIS. He's gonna talk to us about, you know, getting up before dawn and <laughs> doing cardio and HIIT exercises. Um, while I am a health enthusiast and I am part of the 5 a.m. club, what I will tell you is I don't think those are rituals, folks. I think that those are really good habits that are outgrowths of discipline. The one thing that getting up and doing hit, and I, I wish I did more hit, uh, the, the, and uh, getting up at 5 a.m. and reading 100 books a year, the thing that that has in common with ritual is repetition. But that is where it ends. They are outgrowths of disciplined behavior. But when I talk about ritual, when I talk about the rituals that I've used in my life and over my career, what I'm talking about is prayer, affirmations. It might be wearing a, a lucky shirt, whether it's a freshly pressed white one or whether it's a t-shirt. Some folks carry a rabbit's foot or a coin or they simply close their eyes to invoke the divine. But what I'm talking about is using those types of symbols and those types of, those types of items to really ground an intense desire to change. Because ritual is just about saying, I've come to this spot in my life and I have to let it go. I have to move on, I have to move through it, and I don't quite know how I'm going to do it. So I have to pull on something deeper, more profound, so that I can transcend my own limitations. So I have two children, Sakin and Marisa, and uh, they both live here in Charlotte, and thankfully they are doing quite well. And uh, when they were much younger, we would spend time in the parks and the greenways just looking at nature and really having a great time. One of our rituals were each fall, as fall would come, you've got different fruits that come into play. But in Charlotte, there's a certain fair that comes. And we would go to the fair and we would eat all of the food that there was there. We would gouge ourselves on good food, but the fair had this Ferris wheel in the background. And my kids always would want to get on the Ferris wheel. But what you all don't realize is that ever since I was a young child, I had an immense fear of heights. And so when I talk about a Ferris wheel, you may think about the Ferris wheel that they have in Atlanta, or you may think about the one in Las Vegas or in London. I'm talking about the little two-story Ferris wheel that you almost can jump out of and be okay. <laughs> but for some reason, I was petrified of that Ferris wheel. And so, once or twice a year, I saw myself face to face with my fears. And for the love of my kids, my ritual was to say a quick prayer, take a few deep breaths, and step into that Ferris wheel. Now, mind you, this Ferris wheel is two stories high, you all. I'm a big, grown man, and my kids are like this high. But I was scared. And so when they weren't looking, I would hold on tight and close my eyes and pray that we go around one less time. But I never got over that fear because it would only inconvenience me once or twice a year. 
I never made a true conviction or declarations to change. But there came a point in my life when I realized that I was not living the way I wanted to live because I let this fear stand in my way. See, I always wanted to be a pilot. I always wanted to fly. So imagine reconciling being a pilot and having a fear of heights that are about two stories high. It didn't quite work. So I used ritual to say enough. I've got to chase my dreams. And those of you who know me, one of my favorite quotes are, if your dreams do not scare you, they're not big enough. So I decided to say, the next time I go to this fair, I am going to be able to get on this Ferris wheel. I'm going to keep my eyes open. I won't be scared. And so I signed up for flight lessons, y'all. <laughs> and so before flight lessons came about, I had to invoke ritual. I visualized myself on the Ferris wheel with my hands like this, right? I visualized myself flying a plane. I visualized myself, I had words of affirmation to help me remind myself that if there are little kids who get, get on this Ferris wheel and they aren't scared, why am I a grown adult who is letting myself be afraid? And so I would remind myself, I would say these words of affirmation, and while I was doing it, I would hold this coin here. This is my lucky coin. This is a copper Tuskegee Airmen coin. On the front side, you've got three African-American aviators, some of the first fighters in World War II, some of the best fighters. And on the back, we've got three different planes that they flew. And so when it finally came time for me to get in that airplane, I put this in my pocket, and it became a reminder of my desire to transcend my fears. So here's the picture, y'all. Saturday morning, I get up. I'm driving down 85 North, going to Concord Regional Airport, and the sweat <laughs> is pouring down my face. And my knees are literally trembling. But I keep pushing on, because I know I got this coin in my pocket, right? It was a ritual. Now, if you think I was scared driving up 85 North, what do you think happened when I got in that little two-seater Cessna airplane? I mean, <laughs> I was scared. And I don't know if you've ever faced your fears head on like that. But when you invoke ritual, when you declare that I will not be owned by this fear, there's a magic. And so I pushed through it all. And those of you who have never flown or, or flown a plane yourself, there's a certain magic of pulling on that yoke and seeing the world get small behind you. And so we fast forward to today. I am not afraid of heights, y'all, yeah. right? <laughs> Every now and then, I'll go and test it out. Yeah, I go to a new city. I, I, the first thing I do is say, do they have Ferris wheels here, right? <laughs> so I've been to the Ferris wheel in Vegas. I've been to the one in Atlanta. I look for the high Ferris wheels. And it just is amazing that I was able to transcend fear. So as you're sitting here listening to me, think about your own Ferris wheel or your own fear. And what rituals do you use to transcend your limitations, right? One thing, I done got way ahead of myself here, hold on. <laughs> so when you look at my slides, you will see 
that I have that all of my slides have space as their background. You've got pictures of galaxies and pictures of stars. And I put space in there because one day I realized that we, not only is Earth our home, but the universe is our home. And so perspective is an important part of ritual because the closer you are to your problem, the bigger it looks, the harder it seems to solve. So you can either look at your problem through a microscope or through a telescope. And I choose to look at my problems through a telescope. Think about when you were in high school. You had a test that you didn't quite prepare for, and you're up studying, and you know you're going to get a C at best, and it seems like the end of the world. You're crying, you're stressing, and we are so close to that problem. If I ask you now what was the teacher's name, you couldn't even tell me. But at that point in time, the problem seems so big and so vast. And so ritual is about changing your perspective. And it's about saying, you know what? I don't want to look at this just from the perspective of Earth. I want to look at this from far away. So how does pollution, racism, educational inequities, divisiveness in our community and our society, extreme poverty and homelessness, how do those problems look when you're viewing them from a telescope instead of a microscope? You're far away from them enough that you aren't being overcome by them. And so the ritual that I use to overcome my fear of heights by way of Ferris wheels is the same rituals I use to find my audacity. The audacity to say, you know what? What is homelessness? What is food insecurity? What is children not being able to pass math one? When I step back and I look at those problems through the telescope instead of the microscope, I feel encouraged. I feel up to the task. I feel that if not me, who? And so creatives, I challenge you to do the same thing. You know, I think we, we live in a society where audacity is frowned upon a little bit. But we need more audacity in Charlotte. We need more boldness. We need more visualizing our problems and our challenges through our telescope. You know, the recent Chetty study, part two, that came out, it's proof that there are people in this community who embrace audacity. So as creators, I challenge you to embrace audacity I challenge you to say, fear, get behind me because I've got life to live. I challenge you to think that obstacles are strategically placed in our life because somehow we forget our true strength. Somehow we think and prioritize technology and Esquire computers. We prioritize those over ritual. So if you don't have a copper coin that you can pull on, if you don't have a lucky shirt or a prayer or a visualization or a affirmation that you have in your back pocket, you better get one because there's a Ferris wheel out there for you. You may know it, you may not know it, but there's a Ferris wheel out there for you. 
and Charlotte needs you because a lot of the solutions that we're trying to solve in our world today, we're going to these smart computers when we really need to be going to creatives, correct? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so ritual is what allows me to lead the largest communities and schools in the state of North Carolina. Thank you, thank you. When we look at our CIS in Charlotte, we serve over 6,000 kids every year. We now are in a community where one out of every two schools is a high poverty school. And if I look at that problem through a microscope, that seems overwhelming. But when I look at that problem through a telescope, I realize that the solution is not only in my staff at CIS, but it's in this room here with creatives. Every adult has a responsibility of making a difference in a child's life, right? Every adult. And if you really reflect on your own experiences, what you'll realize is why your parents and your aunts and your grandmothers said really nice things to you and they gave you words of affirmation. The words that were most powerful and transformative were the ones that came from a stranger, the ones that came from a teacher or a coach or a mentor. So you are that person in someone's life. You are that affirmation because those words that are poured into us by that teacher, that coach, that mentor, they're the words that we play over in our mind over and over again and they become the affirmations. They become the ritual. So your charge today is to make sure that you're pouring words of encouragement into the children in your life. And so ritual is what allows me to face these challenges and not flinch. To embrace my assignment to ensure that every child in our community can go as far as their dreams and capabilities can take them. It allows me to inspire my team to do whatever is necessary to remove barriers to learning around homelessness, hunger, and extreme poverty. And as I close, I want you to think about the biggest challenge that you're facing, and I want you to think about how you might leverage ritual to unleash your audacity and your courage so that you can change and become the masterpiece that you are meant to be. Hey, thank you all very much. Amazing. 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 The topic was ritual, y'all. We got some. Menchayasari, everybody. Menchayasari.